Hi guys! In this video I'm going to talk about the derivatives of the softmax and cross entropy, which we will use in the backpropagation algorithm. So we will first start with a short recap of the sigmoid and binary cross entropy, which is a special case of the softmax and cross entropy when you have only two classes. And we already saw this in the backpropagation video. Uh, so for binary classification we have one output and we saw that we are using a sigmoid activation function for it. So we have one neuron in the last layer, its output is AL, its input is ZL, which is equal to the sum of all the previous neurons times the weight plus bias. And let's look at the derivative of the loss. Yeah, so this goes with the actual Y and we compute the loss. And this is also denoted by Y hat. So if we take the derivative of the loss with regards to ZL, uh, using the chain rule, it's equal to the derivative of the loss with regards to the activation times the derivative of the activation with regards to the inputs. And so we already saw what this is equal to. This is just the derivative of the sigmoid. And the derivative of the sigmoid is equal to the sigmoid times one minus the sigmoid, or in this case, the activations times one minus the activations. What about this derivative? Well, it's just equal to this. If we take the derivative here, we get that it's equal to this. Simplifying it, it gets to this. And now if we put everything together, these terms cancel and we are left with the output of the activation minus the true value. And now we will see that something very similar happens in the multi-class case. So let's move to the multi-class case. In the multi-class case, we have the softmax activation function, which is a vector. So we get a vector of elements and each element in that vector is dependent on all the input elements because of the denominator. So the numerator only depends on a single input element, but the denominator is dependent on all the input elements. So we have a gradient of a vector, yeah, the activations, the outputs of the softmax with regards to a vector, the inputs to the softmax. And so the gradient of a vector with regards to a vector will give us a matrix. To simplify, suppose we have only three classes. We have three inputs to the final activation layer. Once we take the softmax, we are getting this. These are the activations also denoted by y hats. Now we want to take the derivatives of this with regards to this. So let's first look what happens in the diagonal of the matrix that we will get. So what happens when we take the derivative of this with regards to z1? What happens when we take the derivative of this with regards to z2? And what happens when we take the derivative of this with regards to z3? So let's take the derivative of a1 with regards to z1. We use the basic quotient rule for derivative. And so it's the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator divided by the denominator squared. We can separate this into these terms over here. Notice that this is exactly a1 and that this is exactly one minus a1. So we got something really similar to the sigmoid derivative from before. What happens in the off diagonal? So what happens when we take the derivative of this with regards to z2 or z3? Well, let's see. Again, we use the basic quotient rule. And so the derivative of the numerator with regards to z2, well, the numerator has nothing that is dependent on z2, so it's zero times this minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator with regards to z2. It will just give us this element over here. This cancels out. Uh, we are left with this. And notice that this is exactly a1 and this is a2. So we get minus a1, a2. So for our three by three matrix, this is the derivative of the softmax. In the diagonal, we get something that is like the sigmoid derivative in the off diagonals, we get the negative multiplication of the activations with each other. So this is the derivative of the softmax. What about the derivative of the cross entropy? We have a derivative of a scalar with regards to a vector. We will get a vector. This is the cross entropy. We take the derivative of it with regards to every element of the outputs. And so the derivative of this is equal to this. The derivative of this is equal to this. Why is that? Well, we have a sum here, but only one element has the log a l1. The derivative of the log is one over the element. And so we will be left with y1 divided by the element. The minus sign remains and we get this vector over here. 
And remember that actually the y's are in this case a one odd vector, so most of these elements will be zero, just one element won't be zero, the element which uh, corresponds to the true label. So going back to our concrete three by three example and putting everything together, we have to multiply this, the matrix over here, with the loss over here, yeah, and I wrote the minus sign here. If we do this, we get this expression over here, but notice that here we have a sum over the y's, but again, the y's are a one odd vector, so the sum of the y's is just equal to one. So all these cancel, we get a vector of y minus a vector of a, we have the minus in the front, so it's a vector of a minus the vector of y. So this is almost identical to before, only this time, instead of having scalar quantities, uh, we have that y and a are vectors and not scalars. And so I hope this helps you understand the intuition behind the derivative of the softmax and the cross entropy. In the corresponding notebook, we will also see how to implement them manually. So this is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one.